In this lecture, you will learn everything about serial version UID, a field often used in the context of serialization and deserialization. Let's take a look at it with an example. I have an employee class which implements serializable. It has a field ID and I'm serializing the object of the employee class in, onto the file system with a file name emp.ser. Once it's serial, serialized, now I have made changes to the class and added a new field called name for the employee. And our JVM has loaded, it, loaded this new class into memory as we are using it at a different place in our application. Now if we try to deserialize this object which we have serialized earlier back, we will get a java.io.invalid class exception. This is because the JVM assigns a field called serial version UID to every class that implements serializable. This is to ensure that whatever class's object is being serialized, it is the same exact class that is in the memory when it is being deserialized. So this calculation of the serial version ID is up to the JVM. It typically uses the fields on that class and their values to calculate it, but we don't know how it does it. And that calculation might vary, that algorithm might vary from JVM to JVM. So when we serialized it, the JVM would have assigned a unique serial version ID based on the ID field. And then we have added a name field and loaded that class into memory. The JVM at that point calculates another serial version UID. And when it loads back or deserializes this emp.ser back, it is not the same serial version ID because if it calculates it based on the ID, it's a different value. If it calculates it based on the ID and name, it's a different value. That is the reason you see, see a java.io.invalid class exception. Another scenario is where we have a client and server running. The client serializes the object ID. It has loaded the class. Now it has assigned a serial version UID to an object and it serializes the object and sends it over the network to a server. The server JVM, these are two different JVMs. The server JVM on the other hand has the same exact class but its calculation of the serial version UID could be different. We can't be sure. This could be a different JVM implementation altogether. So it can throw a invalid class exception, although both the classes are exactly the same. To avoid all these nuisance, we as developers should include a field called serial version UID on every class that implements serializable. If we do that, then the JVM will not automatically generate the serial version UID, which could cause issues. So we have to explicitly define this field and take control into our own hands. The serial version UID can be randomly generated by IDEs like Eclipse or you can assign it a certain number. So here in this client server scenario, you can make sure that both the client version has a 1, 2, 3 and even the server version has a 1, 2, 3. Similarly, if you are okay for the serialized object to be deserialized, even if a new field is added, then you can define a serial version ID 1, 2, 3 or whatever number you want. It should be a static, final, long and it's recommended that it's private because it should not even be inherited. This is very specific to the current class, the object of which is being serialized. 